All right, welcome back. We're going to make a histogram right now of our data that we've done before. And I'll apologize up front. This video is going to take a couple of minutes longer because when we start talking about making a histogram, there's a bit of art uh, associated with making the, um, the histogram instead of just being straight science. So let's go look at our data. Um, what I'm trying to do here with the histogram is I'd like to make a bar chart to where we're able to take and look at our data here and see if it looks uh, similar to a bell-shaped curve. See my little cursor to kind of move there. We're kind of hoping that if we take and break our data up that we know we're going to have a minimum of 20, we know we're going to have a maximum of 40 customers per day, and that the median should some be somewhere around 27 and the average 28. So from just looking at our data now, once again, it should probably go up, reach a maximum, and then come back down again. We should have few people at the 20 area. We should have few people at the 40 and more in that 28 to 70 range. So that is, that's kind of what the descriptive statistics look like. However, to make a histogram, what we really need to do is we need to come in here and we need to determine which bucket sizes we're going to use. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about buckets in a second. Then I need to make a table of the buckets and the number of occurrences for each of those buckets. And then finally, I need to make a bar chart. Okay, so let's let's talk about this bucket idea uh, to get us going. What I'm really trying to do on my x-axis is I'd like to be able to take, and in some way, if I start at my minimum of 20 and I go to my maximum of 40, how do I take and break up this 20 customers up to 40 customers? How do I take and break that up to where... Um, it makes sense for the boss to be able to uh, to look at it. <clears throat> it would be very nice if we could just go in here and go, all right, let's do 20 to 25. Bosses really can understand this idea of uh, single digits, fives, tens, hundreds, twenty fives, whatever it may be, something like that. Uh, if you go in and do an Excel help, Excel help is going to be able to go through and it will do a histogram for you However, you're going to get some really strange looking buckets, buckets that go from 20.2 to 26.1, and your boss is just not going to be able to like that at all. Okay, so if we do five bucket in increments from 20 up to 40, you see that we only have one, two, three, four buckets. Um, and what we're saying from this point is that your eyeball isn't really going to be able to pick out much detail with just four buckets. As a matter of fact, the rule of thumb is that you need to have at a minimum of five buckets and a maximum of 15. So we need between um, five and 15 buckets. So this idea of going to five, that's a bit too large. So we need to determine what the size of the buckets really should be. Um, if we go back to our max and min right here, we notice that there is a difference the max and min of 20 units. Okay, so if there's 20 units between each one um, and we decide let's let's try to pick 10 buckets as a, as a good center point to go with. If we need to do 20 increments and we want to do 10 buckets then it really means that we should be doing about 2 per bucket. 2 per bucket means that our very first category would be 20 to 21 because those are the only two occurrences, 21, uh, 20 and 21, uh, or 22 to 23 for the next bucket, uh, 24 to 25 for the next bucket. I think you get the point now. 26 to 27, 28 to 29, 30 to 31, 32 to 33, 34 to 35, 36 to 37, 38 to 39, and then really it's 40 to 41, but we know we're not going to get a 41. Okay, at this point, these are our buckets. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Perfect, because we wanted to get between 5 and 15. So now we're set. Now we need to go back to our data down here, and we need to count the number of occurrences 
where I'm just going to copy and paste this over here separately, we need to take and count the number of occurrences to where we really did have only 20 or 21 customers um, in the restaurant uh, over the last month. So if I take my data, I can easily count it uh, if I go in and do a data sort smallest to largest. That just took all of my data and made it to where it's much easier for me to count. Because now I can go in and look at 20 to 21 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 days. And again, I may make a mistake as we count through here, but please forgive me. 1, 2, 3 days that were either 20 or 22. 24, 25 is 1, 2, 3, 4 days. 26 or 27 is 3 days. 28 or 29 is... 1, 2, 3, 4 days. 30 to 31 is only one day. 32 to 33, well that's only one day. 34 to 35, 1, 2, 3, 4 days. 36 to 37, 1, 2, 3 days. 38 to 39, that's only one day. And then finally, 40 to 41 is only one day. Okay, at this point, we've determined our buckets. We've made a bucket and occurrence list, so that's all there. I'm going to get rid of that just so we don't have trouble here in a second. Um, and now it's time for me to make a bar chart. So if I go in and I highlight all of my information here, let's go to Insert. Uh, on this case, if I click on the recommended charts, it's going to bring up a bar chart for me. So here's where we're headed. We're going to a bar chart. I click on OK. Now our bar chart is beginning to look close to what we're seeing, okay, or what we're wanting it to look like. The only thing that's different is if I put this in front of the boss, uh, it doesn't really tell him what the series means. The chart doesn't have a title, and we also have on the bottom, Excel has decided instead of putting these... 20 to 21 days, uh, it just chose a new number one and put it in there. So we need to go in and we need to make a few changes to our chart so that it looks right. So if I left click on the data and then right click, it's going to come in here and it's say let's let's format our data series. Okay, so we're gonna, or sorry, um, let's do select data first. If we select data, we know that our series two, okay, click on series two, click on edit. Series two, the real name for series two, this is the number of um, customers. I'm sorry, it's not either, it's the number of days. So I type in number of days there and I click OK. That brought that over. Series one, we're going to edit that is the number of days. Click OK here. That took care of those issues there. The next thing that we have is the horizontal axis. As I mentioned to you before, Excel went in and said, hey, we want to just put in here one, two, three, four, five. And we want to edit that because what we really would like for have to have for our axis rows here, if I left click and drag it across what we really had as labels and click OK. I'm going to go ahead and click OK to finish this off. Now you can see that the number of days really is occurring along the bottom. That's good for us. Last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to left click on the chart title and then click it again and change this to a title that makes sense to us, histogram of a number of customers per day. Alright, at that point the graph is completely done and I wanted to show you something real quick just as we move forward. We said that we kind of thought uh, if this was normally distributed that it would look like a bell curve. You know there would, be, there would be few occurrences here, it would come up to a center point and then it would drop back off again. That's not really what we have at all with, uh, with this information. And that's why histogram is such a powerful tool is that the boss would probably expect 
from our data over here minimum of 20 maximum of 40 average around 28 median around 27 we'd kind of expect that right about here would be the peak of our information however now that we've taken it and turned it into a histogram the boss can really look at this and say you know what we're really pretty heavily loaded um, with only 20 to 29 customers there are lots of days that we fall in this range and far fewer days that fall in that range and so that's why a histogram is so important to us uh, we shouldn't always assume that we have normally distributed data and a histogram lets us take and look at it and see where we are and see if we do all right that's the way we do it to make a histogram and good luck um, get out there and practice on it thanks